Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, and I'm here with Pastor Dan Slagle, who just brought us part four of Wisdom for Life. Today, we talked about stuff. Mm -hmm. um, loved the perspective on um, stuff that we talked about today, and actually brought up several questions that we have, so yeah. I'll just jump right in. Okay. Um, can Christians have wealth and stuff and still give and act as commanded? Is it wrong to desire both? Is that an unchristian behavior? Let, let me come at it this way. All Christians, it, it, most Christians anyway, already have stuff. M most everybody owns something. Mm -hmm. So it's really not a matter of whether or not you have stuff. The question really is, do, does the stuff have you? Mm, what, what, where is your heart in all of this? Is uh, the thing that you live for getting more stuff is that where sec your security is, your sense of happiness, your sense of well-being, peace? If those sorts of things are a part of the equation, then stuff is not serving a helpful role in your life. On the other hand, if stuff in your life is there to meet the needs of you and your family, to provide pleasure and enjoyment, there's nothing wrong with that, to serve God's purposes, it's perfectly fine to have stuff. The, the, the family that I referenced in the sermon, they pretty diligently pursue wealth. Uh, but it's not to build a kingdom. It's for the kingdom. And that's where they funnel most of their resources. And so I think uh, to the degree that we have those sort of checks and balances in our lives, there's no sin. Sin uh, Stuff is not inherently sinful. Right. It's just the kind of relationship that we have with it. Good. And so that leads us into our second question that we had come in today. What about um, those with a shopping addiction? So how do you reconcile that with being a Christian? If you feel powerless to this need to acquire stuff mm -hmm. and you usually get it, um, how can you how can you move from that? How can you be released from that and to make the right choices? Okay. Well, the first thing I would say is, is to get help. There are plenty of 12-step ministries out there. We have a support group that meets here on Tuesday nights. Um, lots and lots of opportunities to get help for any kind of addiction, uh, and shopping included. Taking that f first step to get help is, is what's really going to set one on a trajectory towards wholeness and, and healing. But then beyond that, I think um, involving yourself in community here at Faith Bridge or wherever you worship on a regular basis can be a, a very big part of moving past this, enlisting the help of others mm -hmm. so that you begin to become more enamored with the things of God than with the latest article of clothing or gadget or, or whatever the case may be. It, it's really more a shifting of um, what you're in love with. Mm -hmm. And if you hang around people who are in love with God and let that love begin to impact your heart, you're going to find yourself, I think, quite naturally leaning that way. But at a minimum, find some place that can help you if it's a true addiction. Yeah, no substitute for that. That's great. Okay, so this was part four, mm -hmm. and next week we're going to be moving into part five, which Pastor Ken will be back to speak to us on Envy. Yeah. So um, thank you for your insights that we've had for the last couple of weeks sure. and for joining us here for Postscript. And thank you for your questions. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.